everyone. Sorry about cutting short your food ex 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 escapades. <laughs> I'm sure your body will cope with that, maybe. What do you reckon? <laughs> All right, just before Monica goes, because Monica did uh, finish up doing this process with Ramsa, Ramtha, and I just, it's really good process, so perhaps Monica can dis describe everything and we'll go from there. I can hold that for okay, you. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> when AJ said Ramtha had something to say, I really didn't want to do it in public, so myself and Mary just went out um, to see if we could do it ourselves. Um, the first thing that normally happens is if I block down or close down, uh, one of my guides or Ramtha will actually tell me what the fear is so that it helps me understand why I'm, I'm not able to, to, to channel at that time. So that the two fears that came up for me were a fear of being out of control in public and a fear of getting it right in public. And then he went on to say, without addressing these issues, it will uh, really impede your, pro your pro progress, um, actually. So, yeah, the ironic thing is the mess is, isn't very long, but it took us maybe twice the time or three times because um, it's really important, as you'll hear, that I accurately represent what um, these spirits are saying. Otherwise, it's just coming through my filters and I'm not being 100% in truth. So, finally, we got round to this. I am happy to speak to you as long as you're willing to say exactly what I say. It is vitally important to use correct terms, and it's actually the correct terms he told me in the toilet, <laughs> so that the very essence of my message is contained within these words. Then I went into a completely clamped down state, and uh, he started getting quite um, jovial about it. He said, do you want to do a word game so that I kind of ease you into it? So basically I had to transcribe exactly what he said. So what he said was cabbages, 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 vernacular dystrophy, which I had no idea what it means. But, and maybe AJ can explain it properly what it means. It's to do with... He's saying, basically saying verbal dystrophy. Okay. <laughs> which is obviously, he's saying, you've got trouble actually putting your words together. Putting my words together. <laughs> so that was funny. But ironically, by him breaking me in that way, I was able to let it flow. So whatever gets us through the night, that's what I say. Um, the matter by which uh, Brother Jesus was referring to is that humans have the tendency to judge at face value what they are experiencing. It is an emotional injury of fear or lack of compassion for others and self that prevent us from connecting and thus communicating with other souls who are on yeah, and thus communicating with other souls who are in spirit form. They once wa they once walked the earth as you do. And then <coughs> that's a pretty, if I just break in there, that's a pretty important point to remember is every single one of these spirits who talk to you, whether they're in the hills of the spirit world or they're in the celestial spheres or they're even in the soul union state, they were a person who lived on earth at some point, right? And because of that, and when I say lived on earth, their life on earth may have been brief. It may have even been cut short by abortion or, or a termination of some kind or miscarriage but they did live on earth at some point. And, and many of us go into meltdown when we're talking to one of these people, but all they are is a people who, person who lived on earth. Would you go in, you don't go into meltdown, well, some of you do, I know, but you generally don't go into meltdown when you talk to me, so why do you go into a meltdown when you talk to somebody else in the spirit world, what, no matter what location they're in? And, uh, and so it's very important to deal with this emotional injury of thinking that others are better or worse than yourself. And that's a very important injury to work your way yep. through. Yep. Um, and then again, I had a bit of a, a block. A block uh, yeah. uh, and so Rantha said, um, much more needs to be addressed, but it will not be, uh, won't be as difficult because you're beginning to trust what I say to you when I say it to you. Um, and at that point, I was really beginning to listen to what he was saying. And I'd been trying to correct it through my own, you know, um, intellect. Uh, and he kept on going, no, 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 no. What I like about Ramtha with Monica is he's being quite firm with her, but still loving, right? So he's just saying, no, now you're not representing what I'm saying, so we've got to stop now, and we've got to address the emotional reason why you're not representing what I'm saying. 
sort of thing, and then it talks a few more words, and no, now you stopped again. Now we've got to, you know, and, and this is going to be very helpful if Monica allows herself to work it through is. that. It is. Like, I think I've got over the initial really, resi I still get resistant, but as soon as he says it, and I, I connect with, yeah, and again, it goes back to that emotion of addicted to getting, wanting to get, get my own right, way all the time. Get it right, and get your own and way. Get, you know, so the, yeah. the, particularly with the men, hey? Particularly with the men. Uh, <laughs> spot on. <laughs> but it's really good because he's patient enough and firm enough to be in total balance so that I don't go, well, fuck you, I'm out of here. Yeah. But it's enough to really in, inspire me to just yeah. keep... Uh, and he did actually commend us on persevering because we were both getting a little bit kind of, oh, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> once these emotional injuries have been properly... Uh, have properly being dealt with, an ease in communication with spirits will then be achieved. And then again I dropped out <laughs> and he said, the matter of relinquishing your own control is of vital importance. <laughs> right, so Monica, keeps wanting to have again. control, keeps wanting to have control. <laughs> um, so you can understand how triggering this is, but it's so helpful. Um, so again, got into a bit of a, a kind of verbal again. constipation again. He said, let's do a word thing. And if there's anyone who knows direct Latin here, it would be helpful. I got the word button. And then we got paralysis expeditum glorious maximus. And if there's anyone who understands Latin, no. No, no takers. No, no, no. Okay, I'll, I'll ask him later on. I'm sure he'll tell me. <laughs> It is only when you can begin to see another soul as a reminding reflection of your own soul condition that understanding and compassion can begin to take place. When one is, when one is unwilling to acknowledge that the spirits you are, are attracting are, by very definition, your own law of attraction, you are denying one of the most important principles of one of God's laws. The law of attraction. It is only in recognition of this basic truth that you can then begin to progress into connecting emotionally with the soul you have attracted in the first place. Once this level of compassion has been achieved, not only are you of greater service to the soul you are communicating with, but you are also aiding your own soul progression and thus becoming of greater service to those around you, both in the spirit world and on earth. Hmm. So. The message actually was quite brief, but what we had to learn to get there it was actually took just as long. <laughs> mm. And this yeah. is the thing is that a lot of times during our communication with our spirit <coughs> friends, often they're trying to teach you the lessons of communication during the entire exercise. And uh, unfortunately what happens with many mediums is they're so focused on the message that they forget all of the personal lessons that are being taught to them in, the, in, in this entire interaction. And during the, month, during the week, basically, both myself and Ramtha have been very focused on helping Monica see what's really going down mm -hmm. instead of being focused just on a message or just on the interaction, but rather see what's going on within your law of attraction and within the spirit's law of attraction mm -hmm. and how the combined law of attraction is actually occurring to, to actually bring out help for everyone involved. Yeah. And so, so Monica's had the experience this week of helping quite a lot of different spirits, and I'll talk to you about some that uh, after Monica's left, but, um, but uh, have, even having some beautiful experience of, of helping spirits who she loves and who have loved her for many years but, and being able to help them. Mm. You know, that, that, you know, many of you don't feel you could help a celestial spirit, do you? Well, the truth is that you can because many of them have soulmates that are in this, the lower spheres of the spirit world. So you could easily help one of them by helping their soulmate. Do you know what I mean? Could so. I just share one more thing? Sure. I think what's um, possibly been um, one of the, the most rewarding parts of this journey as well is that um, I, I was abused by my grandfather <clears throat> and it's taken me years to work up to a point of being able to release a lot of that pain. But actually, um, I think it was around the mediumship time, I actually first saw him and he was in such such poor soul condition, I didn't recognize him, I could just feel him, and Joseph told me who he was, and he was he really, just, he looked like, um, the only way I can describe it is Gollum in um, Lord of the Rings, like just beyond, kind of, beyond human, human recognition, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, and what was so interesting was, although I was really angry with him up until that point, when I realized who it was, I just had the hugest level of compassion for him and actually wanted to help him. And I think, is he now in the fifth 
very close to moving into the seventh sphere. Yeah, he, he's, he's good enough soul condition to be in the sixth, but he's chosen yeah. to remain in the fifth. Yeah. Yep. So he actually came back one day after I had processed a pretty intense emotion of my um, existence is meaningless. And he came back the next morning and actually said that, you know, if you didn't exist, I wouldn't actually be where I am now, you know. Yeah. And it's a really humbling experience when someone you've almost hated most of your life because most of, of my life done. because of that pain and, and the truth is I still haven't cleared all those uh, emotions but mm. knowing he's helped me and know he knowing he's so close and not just to help me but he can now go on once he's in that condition to help so many other people mm. you know that and that's he's had to work through issues of repentance and sorrow hugely and huge so issues. Yeah, yeah it was really really there. big and but I remember him saying that it was my decision a year ago at oneness to really work hard at um, you know forgiving my ancestors that he just saw such a huge amount of divine love that that literally propelled his journey forward which yeah. was extraordinary yeah, you know, it's so, lovely, hey? so that's one of the nicest things so actually his condition almost is a direct result of your process of forgiveness absolutely yeah. which yeah, yeah that's very powerful yeah. yeah yeah thanks Monica thank you so much thanks Rampa <laughs>
people have come through wanting to really harm me. Um, and so that was a lo good law of attraction for me to work through some things. Mm. But yesterday I had this really powerful um, processing on the way here mm. and I actually felt that she was with me helping me. Mm. So that was really beautiful. And when Mon did it, we were all crying because it was just so beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Um, but that's so powerful for me as well that someone is sort of... Um, shifted so much, yeah. That she's willing to now assist the person that she projected so much hatred towards all of her life. And this hatred that she had with Mary began in the first century. Um, so she'd been feeling this hatred towards Mary for such a long time. Yeah, if just behind. Um, it's just a, mess, uh, a question for you, Monica. When you saw your grandfather and he looked like this character from Lord of the Rings, after you'd cleared that, did he did his his visual change, or did, did you, when you see him now, does he look different? Different. Mm. I just had a feeling. Basically, what happened was because I started processing. Well, I, I think it's a two-way thing, but because I once I saw where he was, um, I deeply started going into and um, processing an awful lot of the emotions that were, that I still had within me towards him. Um, I saw him again maybe a month or so later and I, he, he was slightly older than, than the way I remembered him as a child. And I, I thought, it, well no, it might have been about three months later, sorry, my timings, and it could have been about three months later. But then I started seeing him on, more on a regular basis, and uh, um, I think maybe twice actually, but it, my guide introduced him in after doing a huge big emotional release, and he said, I'd like you to meet someone, and he showed me I him in a, a in his fifth level or kind of just about going to his seventh uh, sphere condition and I wouldn't have recognized him because he was like a 36 year old something and, and I, I have never seen what he looked like when he was that age and it was only that I could feel emotionally and, and Joseph was reaffirming who, who he was and now I've started seeing him on a more regular basis because he's you know, being very helpful and, and guiding quite a bit. So there was an intermittent gap between the first time, the second time, the third and the fourth and, and whatever, you know. So it didn't happen overnight. <laughs> he had quite a bit of work to do. Yeah. But as he was doing the work, his, his, his appearance changed quite rapidly. So he started off looking like, a, you know, a terrible distortion of a human. And, and then gradually he looked like he's, how he looked when he was on Earth. And then months later he looked like he was 36 years old and, and as he continues to grow, by the time he reaches at one month he'll look around 25 years of old, around that age and, and be quite perfected in, in terms of his appearance. Yeah. And that's what happens to every spirit who progresses like that. Yeah. Um, are you going to have a mic over there? Thank you, Monica. For, I know, if you want to go, you can go. <laughs> are you kind of enjoying it? That's good. No worries. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> um, my father is, um, is very sick and I feel he's dying very soon. Yep. And um, I, I feel he's in a very dark. A dark condition? Yeah. Yep. Is How there anything I... There's heaps you can do to help him. I can do heaps you can do. help him. Yeah, is he... Is he um, is he conscious when you talk to him or unconscious? He doesn't talk. He doesn't talk? He, he's, no. he's had a stroke of some kind? No, no, but he just doesn't. Doesn't speak? Yeah. Okay, well you've got a captive audience. <laughs> he doesn't talk much, and um, yep. especially with me because we had a big, he denied, he had a big denial of me for a long time. Yeah. So I hardly can talk with him. Right. So well, if I, you feel you want to help him, um, so that's the first thing, because if you don't feel you want to help him, he will feel that actually, he, he'll, he'll go by your feelings, not by your words. So you need to feel that you want to help somebody before you begin trying to help them. But if you feel you want to help him, the best thing to do is sit him down at, at, at some point and talk to him about what he's going to experience when he passes. Um, he's far away, so I, I can't really... Or write him a letter. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So what I would do is I'd write a letter to him knowing that you're going to pass soon, Dad, this is what I wanted to talk to you. I want to talk about what it's going to be like when you get into the spirit world. Because of your current condition, this is probably where you're going to arrive. 
And these are, and you need to deal with things emotionally. Now, the way that I've learned to do that is to receive divine love, and you explain it all in a letter. Wow. Yeah. Send it in a letter, baby. Like, <laughs> 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 bed, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. sorry <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I'd, I'd just like to share something as well about fear. Yeah. Uh, just lately, there's all that fear coming up about 2012 and yep. uh, a, a kind of hopeless yep. moments. Where, and and to, okay. Uh, sorry, are you, are you going to be around next week at the Sunshine Coast? Yeah, I probably have to because come. Because I'm going to. This is what I'm going to focus yeah. on next week. But I'd like to share something. So can, can I? No, no. Can I stop you? Because I want to stay on the mediumship and healing subject. Is that all right? And so we can deal with those other subjects at another... I didn't want to talk about fear. I just wanted to say something. No, but I, I Once want I to, prayed... I want to focus on the mediumship and healing subjects today. Okay? No worries. Um, over here and then Jen... Oh, sorry. The, uh, while the mic's there, right in front. You just go. Sorry about uh, that, guys. Just quickly, Monica. I just, uh, <clears throat> for some reason, wanted to know how Michael Jackson's going. He, he is in pretty low soul condition at the moment, but he's being hugely guided from memory now and, um, by an awful lot of spirits who, again, I think from memory, uh, the, one of the biggest feelings he had uh, was sadness that he was so misjudged. Um, and certainly when we were even talking uh, about him with Elvis, you could feel, I started really feeling the truth about who Michael Jackson was. Um, because quite honestly I had so many emotional injuries of my own of abuse that I wasn't actually feeling something. It was only when he passed over I remember feeling there was so much more to this soul than humanity ever gave him credit for. So there's actually a, a huge amount of um, help and guidance being given to him. Yeah. So I would say he's doing well in that he's got so much help and it doesn't take much. He already has, I feel, that, that core essence of really huge love that, mm. yeah, uh, uh, yeah. He, he has a good connection with God in the sense that he will be fine because he's already on the divine love path and he's already always been associated with God in some way, even on the earth, even though it may not have looked like that. And so he, he's sort of in this condition where, although he passed in poor condition, he's got lots and lots of his friends and, and older family members who are on the divine love path and also quite a number of different musicians and stuff that he's known who have since come on the divine love path that, that, that he knows. So he's, got, he's surrounded by a lot of assistance and help. And so the biggest problem that he's facing is that there's huge amounts of projections still from the earth. There's a new movie out as well that's also adding to those projections and so forth. And so um, he's finding it really, really difficult to deal with all the projections as well as deal with his own emotions. But that's his primary problem. And, and to be frank, that's the primary problem of almost every single person who's been popular on earth. Um, there's so many hooks into them that they find it so hard. Will you imagine if you're a spirit and you could feel every single person projecting at you, and you could just by your feelings go to them. You know? So imagine you got imagine you got five people who are angry with you. Just five. You'd be going, the one person who's angry, he's angry with you, you feel it's unfair, so you have something to say to him, and then all of a sudden there's a oh, there's another person angry, so you feel drawn to them, you go to them, they're angry with you, you get angry back at them, and then you know, instead of dealing with your emotions about what's going on, you feel drawn into these interactions with them all the time. That's just with five people. Imagine now you've got a million people. Projecting, like how many women have been abused when they were children? So how many people with rumours about Michael Jackson's abuse issues, let's say, let's call them that, with rumours about it, I need to emphasise that. How many women are going to be influenced to project at him because of their own abuse issues? Quite a lot, right? Or how many men and young boys are, you know, in the same goes? And so you get all of this projection going at this person that they feel, that, and imagine, you've got a million of these. You can't go and visit every one of them. You just go, go get bombarded by it. And that's what's so hard to deal with, to actually deal with the emotion inside of yourself that causes you to feel upset about that projection. And that's the struggle that he's having at the moment. Yeah. Come on. Um, just to give people an idea, Elvis, had, Elvis said he'd been in a worse place, just to give you an idea. Yeah. So Elvis himself, when he passed, was in a worse place than Michael Jackson was. 
Any other questions for Monica in particular? You want? I'm going to turn up What was the question? You need to say to Mike. Oh, the Latin words. You wanted to know what the Latin words are. Okay. Yeah. It was paralysis expeditum glorious maximus. Paralysis expeditum glorious maximus. Raz was having a joke with you, with her, by the way. So. But it'll mean something. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll let you all know. I'll do yeah. my homework by yeah. the next meeting. Yeah. Spirits have got a good sense of humour, particularly when they're in a celestial world. So don't be surprised. You get a lot of humour coming through once you connect to your own sense of humour. And, uh, and you'll have good fun with that. Is there any other questions you'd like to... Jen? So, um, owning my projections have had a big projection towards your process because I experience things differently, not in words. And, yeah, owning that and calling, owning it and calling it back. Really, really have benefited heaps from all that you've shared. Thank you so much. Anyone else like to? It's been lovely that you... If you knew the amount of emotions Monica has had to work her way through to come up the front here with me and do that, you'd be quite surprised, I think, because uh, com compared with how she did it, because there was quite a lot of pretty hard emotion. Even just, I said, Monica, do you want to put that uh, particular channeling on the net at all? You know, because oh, I can drop it on the net. You know, I'll just create an extra page. You know, and and put you know channelings 2009, and away we go. You know, we can drop a few. And um, and Monica went. <laughs> that took that took a day. You know, that one. <laughs> And then she comes back the next day, yeah, I think I'll do that. And then, then her just saying, yes, of course, <laughs> another, set. <laughs> another set. So uh, the key is with all of your fears is to really confront them and address them and allow yourself to address them by, by letting yourself feel your fears and then, and then but going through them, you know, not staying in them, not acting upon them all the time. That's the key thing to do. If we have a mic behind it. <coughs> Uh, I'd just like to know why there is so much fear about dying, um, particularly where religions are concerned and where the, um, you know, instead of celebrating that someone has moved to a different place and their growth, etc., yep. that there is so much um, trauma around yep. and grief emotional and so on around. Emotional trauma and grief. Yeah. 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 Um, almost all emotional trauma and grief about death have nothing to do with death. It has a lot to do with loss and what we lost in our childhood and so forth in our connections with our parents and, and what we feel we lost in our own life as well. And so what happens when a person passes, it just triggers all of these emotions of loss and, and the terrible emotions of grief that we've stored up all the way through our life. The truth is that that's multi-generational. So, so all the parents have had that and then that gets passed down to the children and that gets passed down to the children and so forth. And so you've got this multi-generational infection, if you like, passed down through the human race of everyone being terrified of dying. And you look at almost every war, for example, has been, has been created because someone's terrified of dying. Right? And we don't want... So, so why, like if someone comes up and puts a gun to your head and says, I'm going to shoot you if you don't do this, like if you're not terrified of dying, is that going to make any difference? It's not going to make one single difference to what you do, right, at all. But because, it's, because of the human race is terrified of dying, a person can, can put up a gun to your head and they can control the rest of your life because you're terrified of dying. Just that one emotional issue. We all need to release the terror of passing. Now for many of us it's not the terror of our, our own passing. It's actually the terror of someone else passing and us being left here. Or, or those kind of emotions, right? Or it's the terror of you know, falling in love and then having the person that you love 
no longer able to be connected with you and talk with you and no longer being able to interact with them and make, make love to them and all those different things. That's a big thing as well. And then there's this whole terror of our children dying that we have. And, and a lot of that is about loss of our childhood and grief about our loss of in our own childhood and so forth. There is just literally hundreds of emotions that create this terror of death in the human race. The more we, and this is one of the things I'll be addressing with you next week, because it's such an important thing for the general population to deal with, but from a mediumship perspective, it is so important to deal with as well, because many of you, once you start really connecting as a medium, you're going to start channeling stuff that lots of people on this earth disagree with. Trust me. Like, you're going to start channeling a lot of stuff, right? That lots of people on the planet disagree with, and a lot of people have heavy investments about falsehood. They are heavily invested in lies. They want the lies to be true. A lot of them don't even think of it. Like, you look at how many mediums out there believe in reincarnation. And then you start as a medium, start channeling all this stuff about reincarnation not being true, except if you do it this way and so forth. How many of these mediums are going to get their back up? And particularly if you become popular as a medium because of what you're channeling. How many people are going to get their back up then? And you've got to deal with that. This terror of being attacked and personal pain and all these other terrors that we have, we need to address inside of ourselves. Does that make sense? We need to address them. If we don't address them, then what will happen is we'll just attract them anyway. And the beauty of addressing them is that we can have a lot closer connection to the spirit world as well. So the fear of death is a huge emotional injury, you're dead right, that needs to be addressed on the planet. But it needs to be addressed emotionally. You can't just intellectualise yourself away from it. Now, religion has been a major cause of this because most people in religions are terrified of death. The reason why is because what have we been taught about death? Hell, fire, you know, if you do one thing... Now, now if you do one thing wrong, that's where you're going to go. So how many of you have done one thing wrong? <laughs> I can list like 500 things I've done wrong, right? 500 things, like, like Ramsey said to me the other day, I only get a certain amount of things, a certain percentage right. So, so he said, in my, spirit, in my spirit feelings, you know, when I'm feeling a spirit and talking to you about the feelings of the spirits with you, he said, I get that right 84% of the time. So that's 16% of the time I get it wrong. That's a lot of errors going on, right? And then, and then he says, when I'm talking to you about your emotions, uh, there's, there's um, was it six percent of the time that I get that wrong. That's a lot of errors because I've said a lot of things to you about your emotions, right? So, so if I was hooked into all of these errors and all these mistakes that I've made, and, and I get afraid of it, I wouldn't even be sit standing up here in front of you. What would I be doing instead? I'd be sitting at home in terror about the errors that I've been in and how when I'm going to pass, it's going to affect my life. All right, this is what I'd be if I believed in the hellfire torment type thing, right? So the thing that we need to do is come to understand that almost all of these teachings of death all are all very heavy, heavy stuff and it's all been projected as multi-generationally through religion and through our culture and through our environment and just in almost, and all the emotional conditions that are in people as well that project it down through humanity. So it's going to be an emotion we need to address generally inside of ourselves. Yep. But if heaven is depicted as being heaven, yeah. why don't we celebrate when people leave the, the planet? Problem, the problem is, though, that the majority of people, when they pass, don't pass into heaven. Right? If we look at the spheres again, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, from there up is what I would classify as heaven. The eighth sphere onwards is where the condition of at one with God. The fact is that the majority of people who are the most developed persons in the spirit world are in the sixth sphere. So they're not even in heaven yet. Right? They think they are, but they're not. Now, the majority of people when they pass, because the earth is in this condition of usually first sphere condition, the majority of people when they pass are in a first sphere condition. Almost every single person who ever passes is in that condition. Now, is that heaven? No. It's going to range from how we're living right now to worse that's where we, most of us are going to pass. And so what happens is when a person passes, they pass in this shock. 
because they are so shocked to look in the mirror and see their own reflection. They are so shocked that they're passing into the current state that they've passed to do. And they're so shocked that they look at their body and they look like, you know, these disfigured, uh, inhuman people. And what is the first feeling they feel, do you think? What would you feel? Well, I, I would feel terrified. Don't you? Feel, wouldn't you feel terrified? How did I get in this condition? Why am I in this condition? What's going on? What's happened to my body? What's happened to my life? Now, all of that emotion gets projected back to the earth. All of that. So that's why a lot of people are so afraid of dying. You know, a lot of these people who, 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 who sit on or lay on a deathbed in a semi-conscious or unconscious state for months and months and months and months and months, you know what the problem is? They have already seen the, how they look and they are actually terrified to actually stay in that condition permanently. And they want to hold on to life here on the earth for as long as they possibly can because of that. And they've got no idea how to get out of that. Now, you can even help them, believe it or not. With mediumistic skills, you can help them too. Because in their sleep state, you can talk to them, just like you can talk to a medium and help them through that emotion. And many of you, if you've ever tried doing it, find within a few days that person passes. They might be holding on for months and months and months because of their terror. So the majority of people, when they pass over, are actually quite terrified. They're not in a nice place at all because they're soul conditioned and they don't understand soul conditioning. They don't understand the laws of God. They don't understand how they, break, they broke those laws. And so they pass over in this very, very poor condition. And that's one of the reasons why there's still this heavy projection on earth that don't pass, don't pass, don't pass. You're not going to enjoy yourself when you pass. The truth is, above there, there's more and more and more happiness. And when you get to there, it's like bliss, right? But unfortunately, the majority of people who can talk, can talk to the earth because of the condition of the mediums on earth only are in the condition that are similar to the mediums themselves, which are is a first fear condition as well. And so the majority of experiences that get reflected are all these really negative experiences and so forth. And then you get these ones who, uh, who have been like, um, you know, new age indoctrinated, I would say. And what they believe is that, oh, all you do is pass now, ask for the white light and go for the light and go for the hybrid and everything's fine, you know. And then when those people pass, they are shocked. They are shocked. I've talked to some mediums who have passed and they were more shocked than the average person who passed. And the reason why was because they thought that they were in one of these conditions. They thought that, but they passed in this condition. And they are absolutely distraught because they were in totally different condition to what they thought themselves to be. And this is why the soul development is so important. Understanding love is so important. Understanding God's laws about love and all of the principles of love is so important because you want to pass, and eventually you want to get to the state, we want to get the world to the state where everybody passes there. When everybody passes there, no one's going to be afraid of passing. Right? But until that point in time, there's going to be a lot of fear because there's a lot of emotions to release and a lot of feelings to feel. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I have a few questions, if I could. Um, just going on to the lady's uh, comment about... Um, her father, my father, uh, is is dying too. Yep. Um, I've talked to him progressively about God and things like that. And uh, and when I said, "Do you know you're dying?" Uh, he's denied it and said, oh, "I've got lots of life in me." Um, and I feel he's in not a very good space. Yep. And um, when my brothers found out that I was doing this, um, they said that I should stop because I'm terrifying him and might put him into a state of total whatever. No. no. Um, what you're doing is a loving thing to him if your motive is loving, that you're doing a, a loving thing for him. Because what will happen is even if he denies absolutely everything he hears from you right now, the moment he passes, you know who's going to remember the most? The person who tried to talk to him about what would happen when he passed. And he's going to remember you the most because where you're describing and what you're describing is exactly what he's experiencing now. And he'll say, gee, the only person who knew what I was going through was you. And then he will want to remember what you said. And when he remembers what you said, 
that's going to be of huge benefit to him and, and of huge importance to him because he will be able to progress from that point quite readily and rapidly. I'm getting lots and lots of spirits, by the way, in the first fear at the moment who um, are really impressing me. They wished that that, that had happened to them. There's so many of them, they're all crying, <laughs> and they wish that that had happened for them because now they're hearing it in groups like this and they don't know really how to connect it. If they, they feel that if they had heard it way before, the first instant they passed, they would have had, or even before they passed, they would have just had so much easier time in the spirit world. Right. Um, I had a, a conflict of not listening so much to my brother, but was I going against my father's free will not to hear this? Not unless he says, don't talk to me anymore. And then if he says, don't talk to you anymore about it, then don't. But, okay. but just, the one, just the one conversation. Yeah is going to have a huge impact on him. So it can be one conversation that the person rejects, but the moment they pass, that's what they're going to remember. The person who knew what was happening. And they're, going to, they're even going to be attracted to you, going to be attracted to you and listen to you more and watch what you're doing and all sorts of things because you will know more. They know then that you know more than what they knew. Mm. You know, before a person passes, well, quite often we're quite arrogant, right? Before we pass, we think, oh, I know better than that. No, there's no spirit world. But, you know, crazy. You know, you're just a crazy nutter, really, at the end of the day. You know, a lot of men in particular think that about, uh, about this kind of thing. You're just a crazy nutter, you know. Like, how, you know, they come up with all these intellectual arguments of how it can't be possible. And then the moment they pass, they realise, well, that, that was all pretty silly <laughs> words that I spoke. And look at where I am now. Mm. Like, and, and if they listen just one conversation to you, it's a huge, huge change in their life. And many of the spirits that are here today feel that if they had had this benefit given to them, that now they would just be, they would just be in far better and far greater happiness than, than where they are now, because they're still in the first fear, mm -hmm. feeling remorse about the fact that they hadn't ever heard the truth. Mm -hmm. I had some spirits come to us uh, during the week uh, with Monica and... Uh, there was a group of spirits who were Southern American religion, religion people. I forget his name. What was his name again? James Cudwell was his name. And he had a group of ministers with him. He was a minister, a Christian minister, a fundamentalist Christian minister. And uh, he came because he was angry with me. He, he, t he said that I taught all this untruth in the Bible. <laughs> And, uh, and, I, and we, so I firstly talked to him about the fact that I didn't teach anything in the Bible, that the Bible wasn't a representation of what I taught. So after we got over that hurdle, we started to talk about what we actually were teaching. And we got down to some of his emotions, and some of his biggest emotions were his fear that he had taught so many people untruth that he didn't know what to do about it. He just didn't know what to do about it. And also, he had, he had a degree while he was on earth, a degree of arrogance about teaching it. And he was one of those fire and brimstone type of preachers. You know, so he, he had actually locked up a lot of people in their belief systems in his life. And he was surrounded by a group of ministers who were in exactly the same condition. And they were in this old, grungy church in the spirit world. And they spent all their life in remorse, but not really being in remorse. They were just angry with Jesus. And so they came to me to express their rage with me in this, in this discussion. Now, as we went through the discussion, he, after dealing with some of his anger, we got into some of the grief. And once we started connecting the grief, he, he just changed very, very rapidly after that point. Because he'd been there for a lot of years. And so he's been in this state where he's been projecting all this anger and rage and blame not understanding that it was... And then I, then I recalled to him back some of the words from the Bible that I actually did say, that he actually himself taught from the pulpit. And words like, you know, that the pe persons who are merciful and meek will inherit the kingdom. Uh, you know, those kind of things that I said. And I recalled back to him the fact that a, a person couldn't listen with their head or their ears. They had to listen with their heart. And I, and I referred to him how he didn't listen with his heart. He only listened with his head, right? And things like that. And once he started connecting to those things, he just had a big breakdown and started crying. And, and the other thing that's advantageous too for these spirits is while I'm speaking that, the spirits can see the divine love flowing through me 
and brightening my body. And it gets, the more I talk about divine truth, the brighter my body gets. And the golden stuff that you felt, Monica, when you, it was entering you, is exactly the same thing that happens to me. That all brightens up. And this wave of love flows all over them as a result. Does that make sense? And so what happens is they start yelling at me and then there's all this love coming at them and then they get all confused, right? Because they're yelling at someone that's giving them love and that, that's the first time they've felt love for so many years, usually, that all of a sudden all of them went quiet. So they, they all started yelling at the start and being upset and angry, but after a little while they just all went quiet and then they listened to what was going on. And all of them moved forward, all of them, in that little church of ministers that, uh, where they had to work through a lot of different emotions. So this is what you have the ability to do as a medium. You have the ability to actually help these spirits connect to these emotions and progress so rapidly. This is ability that you don't really have with people on earth, really. How, how long do you have to talk to one person to convince them the divine truth? Oh, you talk again, you talk again, you talk again, and two years later you're still talking, and they still, oh, they're still stuck on whether there's a God or not, right? Or they're still stuck on whether there's such a thing as divine love, or they're still stuck on the fact that, that, that there's a thing called a law of compensation, or whatever it is, or they're still stuck on the fact that they've got to be emotional, or whatever. And, and, you know, so much time goes past here on earth because of all the mistrust and all the lies and all the different attractions that happen as a result of all the lies that I have inside of me and I get attracted to me, all these beliefs. And then I get all these people saying, but it's a cult now and this person is doing this now. And, and that triggers a heap of my fear as well. And before I know it, like I've got to barge through in the, on the earth all of these things to progress. Right? Now, if you've been a spirit in the spirit world for a thousand years and you've been in the hells, do you think you're ready to be happy? Well, a lot of times you are. Huh? <laughs> right? And so there's nothing to barge through when a person's in that place except some emotion. And that's all. You know, they know, the, they know they're not in heaven. They know there's no hell fire. So already there's two beliefs that they had when they were on earth all gone. They haven't seen God yet and they don't even feel God yet, so a lot of times they don't even believe in a God. And you can help them go through that process in five minutes if they're open to it. And so there's so much you can do and this is why when you talk to the spirits in the spirit world, so much change can happen very, very rapidly. And that's what I love about it. And by the way, it doesn't happen as rapidly when you're in the spirit world talking to them. The reason why is this. And this is something that um, I had to explain to quite a lot of mediums through, the, through development. So here you are on earth, right? It doesn't matter what state you are. So from the state point of view, you could be in a third sphere, you can be in a fifth sphere or whatever, you're still on earth, right? You're still in the physical. So we'll say this is the mortal. You're the mortal living on earth. Here's the spirit in the spirit world. He'll be in the first sphere oftentimes, right? But he could be in the second, by the way, and still have false beliefs. He could be in the third and have false beliefs. He can be in the sixth and have false beliefs, right? Still. And so, so obviously, anyone from the first sphere to the sixth, I have the ability to help to progress beyond that point, right? Now, when this person comes to talk with you, there's this energetic thing that happens. They're drawn to the earth and they're drawn back to all of the emotional experiences that they had while they were on the earth by talking to you. Does that make sense? Yeah, if you're in the spirit world, you just picture it this way. If you're in the spirit world somewhere, you can be pretty distant from what happened at your earth life, can't you? You imagine if you're in the sixth sphere, and it, it took you a thousand years to get there, right? And for many in the sixth sphere, it took a thousand, five thousand years even to get there. So imagine you're in the sixth sphere, doing all the intellectual stuff to get to the sixth sphere, and then somebody wants to talk to you from Earth. And all of a sudden, you, what happens is you get these little packets that appear, and you know who it is, and you can see the stream, you just follow the stream back from where the packet come, and you'll go to the person, right? It's really easy to get to the person. So all you do is go bang, and you're there, right next to the person. But now you're in a first sphere Earth environment that reminds you of the time you were on the earth. And of course, reminds you of all of the emotions that you felt. 
when you're on the earth that are yet to be healed. Does that make sense? Now, when that happens, now I can talk to that person, even if there's a six feet person who's come down to me, I can talk to that person and reconnect them with some of those emotions that they haven't yet felt. As long as I can feel those emotions, I can actually reconnect them. So there's times when I've had a conversation with a six fear spirit where what I've said to them is things like, do you remember that time on the earth when you had a feeling for God? Because a lot of times I can feel they had that feeling when they were on earth, but they lost that feeling because they now believe they're God. Right? But anyway, when they're on earth, they had the feeling for God, for, for someone external from, to themselves, God, who they had a belief in, which they gave up on as they progressed. And then I can reconnect them with that emotion and reconnect them with that feeling and help them work their way through the emotional reason why they denied that hole in their soul, if you like, that they haven't yet experienced. But if it's a first fear spirit, I can do something like... I can reconnect them to where they were born and what life they had on the earth and then they start experiencing their emotions. And the beauty of experiencing their emotions is I can now connect with them and talk to them about how they can progress on the divine love path, emotionally, on the divine love path. So just the act of them coming to earth and speaking to a mortal person on earth causes them to get into a state of remembering their past. Well, you think about it. If you had 5,000 years in the spirit world and somebody said, oh, do you remember when you were five years old? <laughs> like, Ramtha came to us and I said, how, how old are you now, Ramtha? 48,900 years old is how old Ramtha is. Around about, he said. Give or take a few years, he wasn't going to be too specific. I said, how many people have you used as a medium in your life? 937 before Monica. So he's actually used as a medium 937 people before he started to talk to Monica right, in his life. And, and so you imagine that bigger life. Like, and then you say to Ramp that, uh, can you remember when you were five? <laughs> and he goes, like, like, five, right? okay. <laughs> you know, let's try that. You know, like, there's so much that happens in between. You know, what do you do with that? And, and so, so you imagine if... But, but the fact is that because the person's now in the earth environment, they can easily remember a lot of these things about their life much more than they could remember when they were so removed in the spirit world, even if one of the hills, they are quite removed from their life on the earth because their new life is what embroils them. And so the fact is that when you speak to them, you've got this lovely connection that brings them back to some of their unhealed emotions. And if they're anyone up until the sixth sphere, even to the seventh sphere, there are still unhealed emotions to work, your way, to work their way through. And so you can help any of them by, by doing that. Now, by the time they get to the seventh sphere, they know a lot about the divine love path. So it's unlikely if you're in a lower condition that you'll help them be, be able to help them much personally. But you'll certainly be able to help their soulmate if they're down here somewhere, won't you? You know, that you can help connect them connect with their soulmate if their soulmate's still not making the progression. You have a look at the Paget messages. You will see so many times soulmates were brought to Paget so that they could talk to the soulmate so that they could get some connection going with them. Right? This is something you can do. A dating agency, yeah. I, my favourite job in the spirit world would have been a dating agency. Uh, well, I call it the soulmate agency, right? It, that's my favourite job. Mary wasn't too impressed when she first heard that, but she's not, now more interested in that, aren't you, babe? So, so the, da the dating agency idea, you know, which is basically helping soulmates get together, would be such a beautiful thing, wouldn't it? Like, you know, yeah. And, well, you think you'd like that now, but you wait until you meet your soulmates. You'll find the first bits of it are going to be quite traumatic for you. So <laughs> you, might, you might think after that maybe it's not such a good idea, but, but um, it's a really beautiful thing to be able to do in the spirit world for other people. And there's so many things like that that you can do. A person on earth that has the ability to do. And we, you, you can just go by your desires to do these things. So if you have a passionate desire for mediumship, then use that desire in a really passionate way, you know, in a loving way to, to help these different people who need assistance. Trust me, there are millions of them. Millions and millions and millions of them that need assistance. 
And the beauty of it is that you can do it quite easily and without very much trauma to yourself, aside from remembering your law of attraction. So you need to always remember that, right? Karen? And if we have the mic over here, thanks. Sorry. Um, if you're not mediumistic, yep. um, well, I don't think I'm mediumistic, so what I do is I invite the dead people that I know to yep. come along. Yep. And, and also, my dad's not very interested in hearing about this stuff. And so I've said to him, because he's, you know, he's going to go soon, I've said, well, when you get over the other side, Dad, come and see me. Yeah. Awesome. Come and see me. That's awesome. what, you know. Yeah. So yeah, that's awesome. He's not listening now, so he will later. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's dead right, too. Yeah. That's dead right. Uh, so let, let yourself do that. At least present them with the fact that they've got some options. It's really powerful. Um, Jen? Um, I have a very different experience of mediumship than what's been conveyed today. Mm -hmm. I um, get visions of things. Um, I see um, events unfold. Mm -hmm. um, um, usually at the time, the verification for me is that the place that I'm in myself, um, just prior to the vision coming, that's what I call it, is usually very different. Um, can I explain why there's differences? Please. Okay. That, that was what I was going to ask. That was what you were going to get to, anyway. Yep. Sorry. That's all right. It's handy sometimes knowing what you want to ask, isn't it? Because then we can, we can short, shortcut the whole thing. Right? Remember, everything's based on soul condition. Every single soul has the ability to hear. Every single soul has the ability to see. Every single soul has the ability to smell. Every single soul has the ability to touch. Spirits. Well, your soul has that ability, doesn't it? Has the ability to touch, you, you know. The fact that you can touch and feel it means your soul must have the ability to feel the sensation of touch. Otherwise, you wouldn't recognize it, right? And your soul must have the ability to hear because you, can't, you can hear right now, can't you? So your soul must have the ability to hear, right? And you can see right now, can't you? You've got eyes and then you know the spirits can see because they come and they obviously can see you. So they've got eyes too. So, so there's an ability to see. And there's an ability to smell. You can smell, can't you? And there's also the ability to... These are senses, are they not? Taste. You have these senses in your soul, don't you? So therefore, the, this spirit, every single spirit has these senses in their soul, don't they? Okay. So, so remember I said that, these, that, that our abilities in the physical form are actually a subset of what our abilities are in the spirit body form. So we actually even have more abilities than this sensory-wise in the spirit form. But let's just go by those five for the moment. Now, I have the ability to touch, see, hear, smell and taste a spirit. Not that I want to taste them maybe, but <laughs> the other things I certainly have the ability to do. And, and that being the case, and by the way, the sense of taste and the sense of smell isn't really, um, just as a sub-point, if you take away all your smell, you won't be able to taste. So um, let's leave it with the ability to smell. So, so here we are, we've got these abilities. We've got these abilities to connect to every single person in the universe in one of these ways, in every one of these ways. Right? Now, I also have the ability to feel emotion. Right? And I also have the ability, believe it or not, this is all spirit form abilities, but I have the ability to actually to f get pictures in my brain. Many of you do this already. Like I say, can you cast your mind back to when you were five? Why do I say that? Because in your mind there's this recollection of your like a picture. And you can play the movie. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, away it goes. And you can play, many of you have done that, right? You play a movie to yourself of what happened back then. So you've got this ability to see pictures, right? And so forth, right? There's quite a lot of abilities every one of us have got naturally. These are all natural abilities. Now, I have this ability to do this with every single other being in the universe, depending upon my and their development. Right. 
So, let's go with that. I've got the ability to do that to every other single person in the universe. That means I have the perfect ability somewhere in with me to hear a spirit. Whether I'm hearing one now or not, it's immaterial. I have the ability to hear. Now, what have I said to you is the only thing that limits any ability? Unhealed emotions, right? In, in your soul. Unhealed emotions. Now, by the way, unhealed beliefs are also unhealed emotions. So that, that's all encompassing. Unhealed emotions. So if I have an unhealed emotion within myself that prevents the hearing of a spirit, then there's a reason for that. Right? In Jen, in your case, you often talk too much. That stops people from hearing and it stops you from hearing. Does that make sense? And that's an emotional injury that needs to be healed within yourself. When you heal that within yourself, you'll be able to hear the words these spirits want to say to you. Does that make sense? Quite. The same goes with seeing. Oftentimes when we were little, you know what we saw? You saw the sixth sense, right? Many of you saw in the sixth sense, the movie? But what you see is these terrible, terrifying things, right? Because there's all these earthbound spirits that haven't yet passed and you see them and all oh, they terrify you. And what do you do with that? I, it's an emotion now. It's an emotion in me. I don't want to see them. I was talking to a young a fellow, he's, a, he's about my age, around 40 or something. When he was little, he couldn't tell the difference between a live person and a dead person aside from the different things he saw in the dead person. Right? And right up to the age of five or six or seven, he couldn't tell the difference. Right? So all he, he, he would see them and he'd start talking to them and mum would say, who are you talking to now? Oh, okay, this one must be invisible to mum, <laughs> but it's not invisible to me. I see him like, like he's right there. And, and eventually, he taught himself to shut it all down. And the reason why he taught himself to shut it all down is because he was sick and tired of them hanging around of him. He didn't like his life being impacted, so there's this huge emotion that got created inside of him of, that I don't want these spirits, I don't want to see them, I don't want to see them anymore. And so he shut down his sight. This is what's happened to the majority of us. We've shut down one, two, three, four, and, and to be frank, usually for most of us, we've shut down all of it, right? Out of different fears and, and that are covering over different unhealed emotions. So to open it up, all we need to do is to address these fears, and then once we address the fears, we'll then start healing the emotion that prevents the condition. So all of a sudden you'll find you'll start hearing things once you start addressing the emotion that causes you to not hear. And you'll start hearing things and you'll hear more and more and eventually you'll hear so clearly that it's just like me and you talking, right? And then another time you'll start working through the sight thing and the scary things you might see and the evil looking creatures you might see that actually spirits can impose, they can draw themselves together in a form and you know, make, you know, just to frighten you, right? And once you deal with the fear of being frightened from the spirit world, what happens then? You're allowed to see anything. You can see anything, it doesn't frighten you at all. You go, look at me, ah, look at you, you're making yourself look terrible. What is that for? Why do you do that? What's the emotional reason why you're doing that for? <laughs> right? <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's what you would do. And so you would start seeing these spirits just like anybody and you start treating them like anybody. And if they hang around you badgering you, you'll deal with that emotion and you'll release that emotion. Now they won't hang around you and badger you. You say, no, 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 hang on a sec. I've got free will. You need to just move aside there. Wednesday nights are your time to talk to me. <laughs> you <know? laughs> and you'll be able to do that and they'll respect that because of your soul condition. And so the key is always healing the, those unhealed emotions and the unhealed fears within your soul if you want to imp improve your mediumship skills. And what will happen eventually is you'll be able to touch them, see them, hear them, smell them. You'll be able to feel their emotion. They will send you pictures of their life and you'll have a very, very complete relationship with them. Doesn't that sound pretty good? Yeah. And, and it's easy to achieve relatively in the sense that you've just got to work through your unhealed emotions and your unhealed fears. No, the so-called mediumistic people have one or two or three of these particular abilities that have already got less injury on them. And then, of course, you know, obviously with different things, people have different natural abilities. So all of you have an ability for music, whether you realise it or not. How many of you actually play a musical instrument? 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, so about what? About probably one sixth to one seventh of the audience. The truth is, all of you could. But there's something in you that detunes you from that desire to do that. All of you are capable. How many of you are artists? You want to put up a hand? Like draw pictures or paint or whatever. Yeah, a few more. So, so but there's still a large amount of the organisation of the people here who have not realised that particular ability. So, what do we do with that? We heal that emotion, and then we see where we go with that. And you'll find that there's all these different unlocked abilities and desires and passions that are within you. Now, one of those is a natural ability for mediumship. But, um, so many people have a natural ability and a natural love of it. And because they have a love of it, they feel drawn to it. So Monica's had a love of it a lot of her life. It began when her abuse began, as a result of trauma, when she went out of body and she spent a lot of time in the first sphere up in the summer land why she was getting abused here on earth. And so her desire to spend time in the spirit world and communicate with spirits started to grow. That was her original trigger. But now she has a much stronger desire to do it. All of you can have a desire and develop a desire to do it for all different reasons. Some of them will be from, from injuries. Some of them will be from pure states. The key is that all of you have these abilities and so all of you then have the ability to communicate in exactly the same way, just like I do and you do and everyone else does. Deal with our emotions and we'll do it. You'll notice, if you're a medium already, you'll notice a huge effect on your mediumship when you deal with your emotions, when you really release causal emotion. Now, unfortunately, in the Paget messages, we spent a lot of time talking to James Paget about his unhealed emotions. And because of his penchant for privacy, he did not record or he did not he destroyed many of those automatic writings that we gave to him. And because of that, now there's this sort of idea that somehow he got into development, you know, just by longing for divine love when there was all this other stuff that we were trying to do with him at the same time. And that's sad that that occurred, but what I'm, what I'm saying to you is document your own progression as a medium. Because how do you measure whether you're improving? What you do is you start off at a certain place and then something happens and you're in a different place and document it, write it all down. Because later on people are going to come to you and say, how did you get to be this like, medium that you are now? And you'll say, you know, when I started, I couldn't see, I could hardly hear, you know, all I could do is just feel a few emotions here and there. That's, that's how I was when I began. And then this is how I got from there to where I am now. That's how it happens. Now down the track, what will happen is many spirits will be able to come to earth and materialise form. But at the moment, and just to talk to us, not, just, not, not for specific purposes, which they can do now, but they, they'll do it just to speak with us on spiritual matters. At the moment they can't do it because the earth is not ready for such an influx of, of spiritual people doing that without everyone wanting to you know, get out a scalpel and dissect them somehow. We need to work our way through all of these emotions and then it will be ready. But if we all understand right now that this is ability that we all have inside of us, then we can grow greatly. You'll also notice in my discussion with Monica during the week that she said that she had all of these pictures and she had all of these smells and sights and everything come to her that the spirits were projecting at her to trigger an emotion that she had within her. And she interpreted them, to, interpreted them as a past life, first century experience. Remember she said that? This is the reason why most people who are mediums on the planet believe in past lives. Because what happens is they get this projection from the spirits of all of these different senses, through all of their senses, which the, spi which the spirit has available to it to communicate to you. And then instead of interpreting it correctly as another person communicating to you and communicating all of these details, what they do is they then say, oh, that's one of my past lives. And you know what the spirit does? It's just like, oh, no, like the whole opportunity of closer bond is just... just broken in that whole process. You imagine if you came to me and you said, oh, AJ, you started describing some of your life and all of a sudden I said, oh, you're describing my life. I must be you. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> doing that on earth would sound quite crazy, right? But we do that in the spirit world all the time. Like, that's what's happening when we often interact with spirits. And this is like, when a lot of people pass over and they look at what's going on on the earth, they go, oh, that's what's going on. Wow, that's pretty logical. Wow, wasn't I off beam, you know? Like, <laughs> how illogical was I in terms of what I was thinking that was? And you start understanding once uh, you pass, and hopefully you don't have to wait till then, but you start understanding. The beauty of understanding it before you pass is you can now use these beautiful relationships. Yeah? Use these beautiful relationships to work your way through issues. Now, before we go any further, what I'd like to do is ask is if anybody did their homework. Right? Which was, remember, it was to feel the spirits that are with you. Would, Nina, would you like to join and join us and talk about it? Or You don't have to. Nobody has to, by the way. Um, can I have that mic that we had? How you doing? I'm really teary. You're really teary. Because you probably noticed. Monica set you off, didn't she? Something set me off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, when I started with this exercise, I, I, I'm one of those ones that feel that I'm not naturally mediumistic, but it didn't take long for me to sense the presence of my mother mm -hmm. around me. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh God, my heart's going off now. And there's a lot of healing that needs to happen in that relationship. Yeah. So oh. I wrote a little piece about sure. that. Sure, good. Um, I've become aware of, of two. Uh, mediums actually one um, two spirits or two p spirits in particular sorry yeah. and yeah. one actually um, and I haven't focused on this one because my mum brought up so much stuff yeah. is one um, feels like a, a male that was with you yeah. in, in the first century and sometimes when I see a picture of you or I think about you I get images that feel like I was with you yeah. in the first in life and century? I feel that he's really supporting me on the divine love path. Okay, so you, you feel he's probably your guide then if that's the case. I haven't gone that haven't far. Haven't gone that far, yeah. yeah. But he, he is guiding you. Yeah. Cool. Go on. Okay. Yep. Um, so, so there's a spirit who's in pretty good condition helping supporting me. you along the path. Yeah, that's cool. great. Yeah. Um, my mother um, was, was a victim of German occupation. Um, and um, probably very much stayed in, in a victim mode and um, projected a lot of guilt onto me. Yeah. I feel she's progressed since her death um, and is hanging around me now and on the divine love path. Um, I feel, um, I'm trying to answer the questions that mm -hmm, you proposed, mm -hmm. I feel she's in a similar condition to me. Um, I feel she still has anger. Um, which masks a deep feeling of not feeling good enough about herself. Mum is now with me as a guide and has learnt and opened up a great deal to the love that now flows between the two of us and is something that was not possible while she was on earth. Mm. I have attracted Mum for the healing we both need. As a result of this connection, there was much left unsaid and undone in our earth relationship. Mum is now seeing me more for who I am and I'm beginning to understand Mum's behaviour and treatment of me whilst on earth. And then, um, while I was writing this, I felt, oh, I really need to connect more emotionally to this. And I thought I had to, I had to cry. Mm -hmm. um, and, but I thought, no, that's bullshit. I need to make a noise. Mm -hmm. And so I live on 10 acres, and I actually went out the back of my house. And for the first time on Wednesday morning, and I met you exactly a year ago today, I screamed. Mm -hmm. I actually really, really screamed like mm -hmm. I've never, ever screamed before. And it only lasted about two minutes and then I was on the ground and... Crying. Yeah. yeah. And it was really, really great because I came back to the house and my 12-year-old son was looking at me and I went, oh, could you hear that? <laughs> and he went, Mum, the whole valley heard it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I was working um, on... I, I do massage healing work and I was working on a client that morning and my neighbour came over and... He'd, um, he'd come over at 6.30 in the morning and found the house all locked up, but he came over back at 10.30 really concerned that I might be dismembered um, in the valley, valley somewhere. And by this time, I'd, I'd processed a lot of the stuff, and I said to Brendan, yeah, look, I had to... Um, and Brendan is really straight, by the way. 
and I haven't shared any of this with him. He changes my flat tyres or fixes my pumps if I get stuck. And <laughs> I said, yeah, Brendan, you know, I really felt this. And I was so clear about it. I so owned it. And um, I said, I felt I had to scream. And so I did. And I said, Brendan, it felt so good that you might actually hear some more. <laughs> and, <laughs> And I was feeling pretty high by then. And then, of course, I had to explain it to the lady um, on the table why my neighbour was coming over, you know, thinking that I was dismembered, but she yeah. was okay with it because I've actually given you uh, her a yeah. DVD. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was... That's good. Now, um, a few suggestions for you that sure. will help you work through some of the emotions and help your mum too. There's a group of movies that you might want to hire out um, that might help you. Um, if someone can give us a pen. Oh, just my pen. And it's a group of movies about war that you avoid. I do. Yeah. Now, the reason why you avoid this, group, uh, this type of movie is because of your mum's feelings. When your mum's with her, she's so, when with your mum's with you, she's so frightened inside of herself that she just doesn't want you to even watch those kind of things. And what will help is it will help you connect with her grief, and a lot of her grief entered you, right? So, so you, it will also help you connect with a lot of your grief and your fear in particular about what might happen. And so my suggestion is watch a few movies that are related to the Second World War. Now, um, have you ever, you've ever watched some of those movies or you've left them all alone? Pretty much. You've never watched, uh, what was the Steven Spielberg one? Um, I don't think it's Sorry? No, no. I've watched Shawshank Redemption. That's not Schindler's List. Have you watched Schindler's List? How does that you haven't watched that, have you? No, I didn't think you had. I'm, I'm shaking a bit. <laughs> yeah, your mum's quite nervous about this process. Schindler's List. There's a movie called Holocaust. There's a movie called Dresden. My mum lived near there, I think. Yeah. Uh, the movie Dresden is, uh, there's a few versions of it. The latest version is probably the most graphic, so I'd get the most graphic. Um, <laughs> the story of Anne Frank, yes, that's the other one I was thinking of. Yeah, and the boy in the striped pyjamas, yeah. My daughter asked me around to her place to watch that movie and it didn't work on the DVD when I went around to her house to watch it. Yeah. And a little black book. These are all different movies based around the Second, Second World War. Now, the reason why I suggest those to you is because that'll help you and your mum. It'll help your mum as well as yourself, you see, because if you invite your mum to sit there and watch it, she's going to be quite frightened about the process too, and you never know that the video DVD player might not work a few times first, and you'll have to work first work through the emotions of that, right? So allow yourself to work through the emotions of that and eventually get to watch them. When, as you watch them, what, will, what you'll find is different emotions will come up that are causal emotions for you and mum to work a way through in the spirit world as well. And the beauty of knowing a person's emotions and knowing how much those emotions affect you is that you can then do personal things to work your way through those emotions. It will help your mum a lot as well. All right. No and um, I had a feeling before that my parents might actually be soulmates. It hit me pretty strongly. Right. And of course that would be what they need to work their way through as well, if, if they are. But uh, at times, you'll, at times many, of, many of you, in fact, at times will feel when people are soulmates for some reason. You'll just feel a similar thing from them. And uh, my suggestion is if that happens, um, wait until they ask, people ask you. And if the person's married, there are certain actual laws involved with regarding love about telling them whether, about whether they're soulmates or not. So you need to uh, bear in mind some of those laws of love. Because you, you don't want to say something to somebody and all of a sudden they decide, oh, oh well, I'm not going to be with the person I'm with and they've got a perfectly happy relationship. Um, you need to help. They need to deal with their emotions about those particular issues. So the same applies when a person's a spirit world. Although it's a bit easier in the spirit world to tell people that, well, they're um, both over there, but I've, exactly. I've lost touch with my dad. I think he's not in really good shape. Okay. Yeah, no, he's probably still in the in the hills. Pretty messy. Yep. Is there any way that I can possibly help him? Yes, you can start praying for him, and he will actually receive some divine love when you pray for him. Uh, when I say receive it, if he he'll he'll feel your he won't necessarily receive the love, but he'll feel the effects of you praying for him. 
and he will feel drawn to you for that reason. And then when you feel him around, talk to him about the divine truth. I'm glad that, thank you for um, picking me because it's good to have these things yeah. kind of confirmed. No worries. Thanks. Catch you. Catch you. All right, who else is there? I can hold it for you, James, and you can then concentrate Thank on what you're doing. Um, so I, I had a lot of trepidation about doing this because of, I can feel the feelings of a lot of spirits well, but I was sure I was going to get myself screwed up with this. So. Yeah, okay. So the first spirit I was aware of was a female called Martha, <clears throat> and she was very sad and said she was drawn to me because she feels some comfort and she's able to draw on my energy, and she's always felt great disappointment with men uh, and she's angry as well and confused because she wants to hurt me as well as get comfort from me mm -hmm. and I had a feeling of wanting to help her surprise surprise <laughs> surprise surprise so can you see the emotional injury inside of yourself yeah, there yeah yeah that she's drawn to she's she, yeah yep that's exactly, good yeah that's good and, and then there was a, a male who was Jackson who was angry and he said, who are you kidding, wanting to please her? She's just sucking you dry and she'd tell her to clear off. They're all the same, I know. Get rid of her. Be a man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Which is one of the unhealed childhood male emotions that you exactly, feel, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, and I said to him, I was angry like him. And he said, that's crap. There's something we can tell her to clear off. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and, I, and he said he was always angry. And uh, I said that I have a lot of anger, but underneath it there's a lot of grief. And he said, so you want me to be sad as well? <laughs> <laughs> and he was really... But so he was really annoyed at the idea of you being sad? Yeah, really annoyed at that, and he didn't want to know any more about that. Yeah. Now, can you see how that can be a part of your resistance to your yeah. grief? Yes, yep. yeah, exactly. That's good. Uh, it became very clear of that. Yeah. yeah, awesome. And then there was another guy called Titus who came in, and he was warm and loving and felt good to be with. And he said, I love you and I love being with you as you feel good. And I said, what do you want from me? And he said, nothing. I live, love you and I've been with you often. And I said, was it you who told me that Paula and I are soulmates? And he said, yeah, weren't you pleased? <laughs> I've been with you for a long time and you helped me often. And I said, was my guide displeased? And he said, no, he's very beautiful, but he wouldn't tell you and I knew. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I felt the real connection with that needing to please yeah. someone. And I knew what he was drawn to there, because needing to please people is... So he could see that, he could yeah. see get you getting told something that would make you happy? Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. he, he automatically just connected that and told you something that would make you that happy? make me happy, And yeah. he wasn't really concerned whether it was right or wrong or, no, or, really. or breaking laws of God or anything, yeah. just to make you happy? To make me happy, yeah. Now, with your emotion there, James, you could feel what's going on Yeah, there. I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. that desire that you have to make others happy as well yeah. and, yeah, and no, please I can them. Feel where that comes from. Yeah, and yeah. also the desire to feel happy within yeah. yourself. That's right. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's and right. what do you feel his condition is? What was your what's your gut feeling? Not very good actually, because I spoke to him again just the other night and there yep. was a change in that too. We we connected differently there and he, yeah. he, he he his pleasure comes from what he sees giving other people pleasure and he himself doesn't matter to himself. He Spot doesn't on, love yeah. himself at all. He's in a first fear condition but not in a dark first fear. Not condition. in a dark place, up yeah. the first somewhere. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then I could feel a bunch of more spirits around so there were six or eight of them that I call snipers who just <laughs> <coughs> and they just hang around waiting for an opportunity to it, all I have to do is get into some feeling and one and of them's in there in. like a flash yeah, yeah, they're yeah. just sniping yeah. and they hook into my anger or my sadness and they, they're not benevolent they have no interest in helping so they're people. quite malevolent towards yeah, you and yeah. can often cause you quite a few problems in your relationship yeah. and, so forth. and they're causing quite a few issues at the yeah. moment I can feel including not wanting to us to talk yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah. And there was another guy there who said he wanted to be my strong right arm. And he, he was a very vigilant guy who said his function was to try to keep the, the snipers away. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, yeah. and, uh, but he, he was really very angry and they sort of played games with him and me and it was a real sort of game that went on. Yeah. And, but, and just so he was trying to protect you he from these other spirits yeah. who were trying to harm you because yeah. he likes you and they... Yeah, that's yeah. right. And he yeah. was trying to keep them away. And he, yeah. But he said, I'll be your strong right arm. Yeah. You know? <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And my mother was there. Um, I've had contact with her before and she was very curious about what I'm doing. 
and she was quite sad but she changed a lot from the first time I contacted her and she was saying something she'd never said before that she wanted to help me but she had no idea how to do that yeah yeah, she's in a. Uh, you have more knowledge of how to deal with your emotions yeah, than your mum has. That's so, right. Yeah. yeah, but it's great, great that she's made that shift. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And she it's shifted a lot more actually. Yeah, yeah. And there was another group of about 130 or so who were just sort of circling around the outside, and mm -hmm. they they were curious and they want to talk but to observe, and they want to know what happens to me as they feel there's something to learn, and they see that I want to help and to give, but they'll wait. Uh, at the moment, is, uh, they have, they're sort of, their um, what what the flitters were said they were you know wandering around looking for entertainment, anything to amuse them. And these these were a group who were looking for entertainment also, but not in a malevolent way. But they're also looking for some knowledge from you. Yeah, that they think for they'd be able to get, yeah, but they don't right. know what they're going to get. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yep. But from the time I started to type these notes to the end, there was always already a change in what I call the resident population. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was sort of flowing. The resident time. population was changing as you were going. <laughs> that's right. That's right. From yeah. instant to instant. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Because as you're feeling different mm. things, I was just thinking about those groups mm. of spirits, and this is something that uh, many of you need to be aware of is because you're on the divine love path and you're starting to receive divine love. And many of you are not aware, but you actually have received divine love. It, at the beginning, you're often not aware of receiving divine love when you're receiving it. So many of you have received some. And then what happens is there's a change in your nature towards emotions and towards love and all those kind of things. And what that does is it attracts a group of spirits around you who just hang around you, but they don't know why they're hanging around you, right? <laughs> And so, and so really what they're doing is waiting for information. They're waiting to know more about what's happening. And you'll find at times you could have thousands of these spirits around you at any one time. And as you grow in your desire to deal with emotion, and as your soul condition changes, the brightness of your body will actually attract even more of them. And eventually a lot of them will just sort of bask in your love is probably the way word to, to use and not even really knowing why they're there. And you will be able to talk to them at some point and help them move beyond that point. So that's something to be aware of too. That's great, James. Yeah. yeah. And then just... And then you got the, Francis. The second... No, I didn't get Francis at right. that time. But he, he knows just, he's your guide, obviously. That was the bit I did back in end of August. And yep. This was the bit I did the other night. Awesome. I yep. followed up on that. And, yep. uh, and um, uh, Francis and... and Apostle John were there for a start and they were saying, I, I was feeling a lot of doubt about my capacity to channel more worthwhile material and John was commenting that it's, it's only this doubt that I have that limits my ability, it's a major thing plus the... Um, um, and then Jackson, who was the angry guy who was there before, was still there but he was less aggressive and he acknowledges that he was very angry with women and he also said he suddenly realised that there were no women where he lived, <laughs> and that <laughs> which is the reason why he's on earth being angry that's with right, women. That's on right. earth, yeah. And it was as though this had never registered anything before. It was a big surprise that, uh, and he had to seek out men with anger with women and act through them. And he feels a lot of frustration with this. And he said that he'd seen some changes in me and wanted to know what he could do. And I got him to contact a bright spirit that was there and uh, he did this and was surprised and said he was going to talk some more yeah and then the the guy who the pleasing guy Titus was there too and I spoke with him about needing to please others and told him clearly that this is a big issue with me and he claimed that this was no problem for him as he thoroughly enjoyed pleasing others in spirit and in the flesh mm -hmm. and I suggested to him that this wasn't necessarily very helpful for those whom he helped and I also just that he did this because he felt that he needed to. And he was reluctant to accept this and was thinking about it. And I assured him that I did this because I had an emotional need that arose from my old emotional injuries, that I was feeling better and I was resolving this apparent need. And he was very curious yeah. about that. So it, what had happened during the month too is you, you have made some shifts when yeah. we went on that little retreat that we had. And, yeah. 
and the stuff you'd made some little shifts here and there, hadn't you? And you'd started connecting to some grief. And you also started to connect to this pleasing women emotion yeah, in particular yeah, that you much. had. Yeah. And, and that was some of the triggers I gave you last week again to well, work yeah, your way through. That well. And that's why um, with this there's yeah. obviously been a little bit of a change, yeah. but there's still some yeah. reluctance with him. So yeah. that also means there's still some reluctance still some with reluctance you. Me, yeah. Yeah. And what I've felt at that time was a really closer, a much cl what I've felt over the last six weeks is a much closer connection with God. Yeah. There's a big change, particularly with the feminine aspect of God. I yeah. feel really, that came up in some work that I did where I felt a, yeah. a really strong connection. And my mother wasn't there, but I'd seen her fairly recently and she's in a much brighter condition. She's shifted quite a lot and she's that's on great. the divine love pathway. Now, yeah, that's good. good. And I wasn't aware of the snipers that were there before, but they were they were around the place. I just wasn't aware of them. Yeah. And then um, then Francis came in, and um, he said um, he was talking, that saying that they were actually there, and that there were two other male spirits as well who were almost always with me. And he said the one you call Jackson is as you describe, and he's somewhat puzzled by what you've said and what he's been shown and told. He's actually doing more than thinking about all this, but is feeling different and confused, but interested in exploring further, and we'll assist him. So your mother's made wonderful progress and is very thankful. She is indeed on the divine love pathway and happy to be so, and she's influencing others of her acquaintance with success. And there are fewer of what you call snipers, but you cannot assume that these will not be with you again, as there are many opportunistic spirits who travel seeking entertainment. The others who keep a little distance are present and their numbers vary considerably. They're interested in the lectures you attend and the discussions that you hold with your friends. And he said, your impressions are accurate as far as you go. There are more spirits with whom you could have contact and from whom you could learn a lot. Seek their attention and company in quiet times and enter into discourse with them and make notes on your recorder. Mm, awesome. Yep, that's very good. How did you feel about all that, James? Oh, I felt really good. Yeah. Because when I was actually doing the second bit, I wasn't feeling really good when I sat down. Yeah. And I was really amazed that I could connect as well as yeah. I could connect. And to. can you see the relationship between a lot of the emotions you were denying yeah. and the spirits and emotions? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Mm. And also you've had the ability to help some of them just yeah. by feeling their yeah, emotions. Just, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, thanks for that. That's rewarding. Thank awesome, you. thank you. Uh, we've got 10 more minutes. Who would like to uh, have another go? Can we? Yeah, let's have you, Soraya. I don't think you've been up too often, so. Hearts, are we? Yeah. Everyone's got a heart. <laughs> You're allowed to have it beat. <laughs> I'm, I'm um, a body worker. Yeah. I think uh, similar to Nina, and I don't really see myself as being mediumistic, but. Yeah. Um, or actually, I, I, some, I have in the past had, I felt spirits wanting to talk with me, and I go, no, 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 I just do this message, I don't talk. <laughs> you don't do, you just do <laughs> body work, that. that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That. But it's actually starting to open up more now. Yeah. Um, I'm consciously opening up, and um, now when I, I, was, I was sort of answering the questions and the mm -hmm. development, so... Um, I've been aware lately that spirits who work with me and are around me have been changing. Right. Um, quite a lot, actually, because I actually did the Oneness Blessing, um, and I was working with those uh, beings for a while, mm -hmm. and uh, I felt that that's changed too. I've invited them to um, look at what I was doing with the Divine Love Path, and um, I, I don't believe they're the same anymore. I, I feel like they've moved away mm -hmm. from me. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, when I'm working in the clinic with people, I've found that um, there is one particular spirit that's been working with me who, uh, as was described to me, gloves up through my hands. Yep, yep. And, um, um, and, and moves he, your hands as well. Yeah, pretty and, much. And I've you... learned to sort of really trust that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's like an intuitive sense, I suppose. I just tell people that my hands connect with their body mm -hmm. and I don't have anything to do with it mm -hmm. much, really. Mm -hmm. And um, and I've, I'm answering the question here. I, his soul condition, I didn't... I, I felt it was very... Um, 
not terribly developed, more um, yep. uh, natural love path stuff. Yep. And uh, but that's changing too now yep. for him. I now that you've sort of even recognised him, he's even changing since you've recognised him. I don't even know. I don't. I think he's still there, but he's, he feels quite different now. Yeah. Not, no. What, I'm, what I mean is that he's um, since you've recognised him, he's actually listened more to what you're doing, and he's now changing what he does as a result of what you're doing. Oh. Yeah, that's what's actually happening. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 What sphere do you think he was in? What sphere do you think? Oh, he was in? actually, I, I, um, I thought maybe just first or second. Actually, that's what Spot I on. wrote here. Spot on, yeah. Yeah. Spot on. That's and maybe is. moving up now. Yeah. Now he is. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Very good. Um, so that's that particular um, guide that guides my hands. Yep. Um, so he's he, not really a guide, is he? You couldn't really call him uh, a guide. He's more a he's more a spirit who's helping you heal. Do the massage. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and that's very obvious to me. Yeah, yeah. spot on. And, um, and he's actually taught me a lot too. Yes. Like yeah. when I'm half awake and half asleep, I'll find my hands doing things. And I go, oh, that's interesting. And then I'll find that, uh, that, yeah, I've never done before. And then there'll be a, even a cup, two or three clients that day that will come that will need that manoeuvre or move. Mm. And yeah. no, it awesome. works really well. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, um, looking at this, yeah, why was he attracted to me? Yeah, because he wants to help me with my um, healing work. Which yes, is what so he said. loves healing and he wants... That's right, yeah. and so to help me with the, my techniques and so on. Could you yeah. feel his emotional condition? Like, so you've, you've related... No, not, not very developed, I didn't think. Yeah, but you've related his emotional condition in a very general way. Mm. What I'm asking is, can you feel his emotion, his specific emotions that attract him to you? Why is this man attracted to you specifically? Could you feel that at all, or? No, I... So my suggestion, if, rather than talk about it now, if you haven't thought about that, is, to, is just to note mm. that down, perhaps. Yeah, and, yeah. and actually now let yourself feel about that, because there's also some male-female issues that are going on between the two of you that he's attracted to you specifically. So if you allow yourself to feel about that, you'll recognise what they are. And if you look at your law of attraction, male-female issues, uh, over the last month or so, you'll start even seeing some of those. Oh, I've been doing a fair bit of that. Yeah. Um, I've been doing a lot of soulmate longing yeah. and, uh, and um, feeling alone yeah. and uh, unloved and untouchable yeah. and all of that. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I don't know whether he's got anything to do with that. But, yeah. um, so yes. allow, allow yourself to just feel about that particular issue with this attraction because there's actually some things for both him and you in that attraction. So I won't mm. say what they mm. are, it's oh, just a matter okay. of you la allowing yourself to feel about it and maybe we can get a chance to talk about it another time. Mm. Mm. Anyway, you had well, some more I'd, things I'd, there. I'd, well, he's, yep. well, there's obviously some complementary um, emotional um, injuries yeah. there, I guess, yeah. Yeah. that yeah. I can look at. Yeah. That's right. Um, mm, oh, yeah, that's the, just, I've already talked about that now. Now, there are other spirits who work beside me. Um, when I remember, I usually pray before uh, I work in my clinic mm -hmm. and invite other guides who need to help my client. Mm -hmm. And I kind of don't really have that much to do with that. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel that the, the a spiritual side of the healing of my client is taken care by these beings. And it's different depending on the person. So every every person that comes, there's a different group of spirits who is Yeah, oh, that, that come with them and yep. also come um, with me. Yep, that's yeah, spot on. That's yeah. exactly what happens. Um, Getting to uh, more development, I suppose, when I, I, I did have a client who's handicapped mm -hmm. and he doesn't talk um, and basically he just makes guttural sounds um, and he rocks all the time and I had the, uh, the honour of massaging this beautiful soul mm -hmm. um, and it, it's easy with someone like that to go into a beautiful space or where I feel a beautiful space where I'm praying mm -hmm. and and relating to him soul to soul mm -hmm. and being in a place of love mm 
and I find that there are some beautiful um, spirit beings that come to be in that room with us. Mm -hmm. And even though he can't speak, I'm sure that he sees because sometimes he goes like that mm -hmm. and he'll look mm -hmm. as if he's looking at a being. Mm -hmm. And um, I've had beautiful emotional experiences just massaging this gentleman. Mm -hmm. I lost that job because I went off the rails for a little while and didn't turn up for a couple of weeks. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Yeah. So something mm. happening with your law of attraction there in terms of... Yeah, well, I actually lost that connection, yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah. And, um, yeah. Mm. Now, the spirits who had come in under those circumstances, you felt pretty good condition. You could feel I their did. condition. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Did, is there any times when you had a client come along where you felt the client was actually had a spirit connected to them directly? Um... Actually, yes. Uh, often with gentlemen who had uh, were projecting at me sexually, mm -hmm. and um, in the past I would humour them. Right. But lately, it's like, um, no, I can't. I, it, actually, I, there was one that I just banned from my clinic. Right. I just did. This is so unloving of myself, even to have this person actually verbally abusing me as well. Mm -hmm. I was like, nah, you mm -hmm. can go. Mm -hmm. Um, so your, I actually, your love of self is growing, so right? Yes, it is, so yeah, good. definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I actually haven't... I haven't really um, connected with the spirits that are connected with them. Yep, okay. Not really consciously. I find that a little bit difficult so to have do. Some fears I kind of leave that, that up to the spirits that I've invited yeah. to do that. You, you know? have some fears uh, about it too. So mm. if you let yourself look at those fears, it's, it's going to be very helpful for your practice if you can look at that, those fears. fears. It's because what, what's happening a lot with, the, with some of the clients coming in with certain pains in certain areas of their body mm -hmm. is they actually have a spirit attachment in that area of their body. And if you could speak with that spirit in your mind while you're dealing with the massage, you'd actually be able to help them in, a, in more than one way, mm. you know, do you know what I mean? A lot of times the spirits in the spirit world who you're assigning help to, to do that can't actually connect with that spirit that's connected and you're actually in a better condition to connect with the spirit mm. that's connected to the client than they are and you're not really understanding that yet, you know, oh, you, okay. you don't get that you're in a I'll position see. that you could help. Then I can do that. Yeah. I have started actually working with... Um, with uh, Annette Nuntil's book, yeah, yeah. and I've actually been working with that for a while, but now I feel like I've got a green light. Oh yes, um, I've always felt that there was emotional mm -hmm. stuff in mm -hmm. the people's bodies, and so I actually, using that book as a reference and also my own intuition, mm -hmm. helping them look at certain issues that say the elbow or, or you know, the, the thumb in the right hand might mm -hmm. actually be, and I talk to them about that during the massage mm -hmm. and that usually I go and how does that you know does that kind of make any sense and they go oh yeah it really does mm -hmm. and sometimes I get some intuition to talk about an area that they might um, want to expand into or look at mm -hmm. and uh, I've had a couple of people say oh Sarai's you've really changed my life and I thought oh that's pretty good for a massage isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. just from a massage <laughs> that's pretty good <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I've started to do that and, and address the emotional issues but not the well, if they address the emotional issues, then the spirit attachments wouldn't be able to attach if they address That's the emotional true, issues. That's very true, but, so but yeah. you can also, if they're having pain in that particular area, then if you can help address the spirit, then, then you can also talk to the person and say, look, this pain here is caused by, you don't even have to tell them, you have to talk to the spirit, really, if you don't want to, mm. if they're not open to that. Mm. You can say, this pain here is actually caused by this emotion, because you know it was that emotion that the spirit was attached to. Yes, Does that yes. Make sense? I, I find that I kind of freeze when I think about feeling into that spirit attachment. Right, I so there's some freeze, fear there. So yeah. that's the fear. Yeah. Yeah, so if you can let yourself deal with some of that fear, that'd be powerful. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Um, anything else? Is there anything else? Oh, um, may I just yeah, yeah, mention? Yeah, yeah, fine. Uh, when I actually do sit down and do. Uh, connect to some emotional processing, deep emotional processing work, I'm very, very aware of what I feel as celestial guides that come down and help me through the process, very similar to um, someone being guided through a journey mm -hmm. therapy mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I never feel alone when I do that. Yeah, it's good. It, it's so beautiful. Mm. Mm. Can I ask you something else? Sure, you can. This is about the soulmate longing that I had. Mm -hmm. 
um, and I don't know whether this is true or not, but um, I felt, it was felt like that guide who helps me with my massage, he didn't feel like a very high spirit, but he came to tell me that my soulmate, who's actually in the celestial realms, uh, has passed away, and he's the one who's been helping me through my life. Right. And um, can't connect directly to me because I'm not in a high enough condition to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with that. Oh, okay, that's mm -hmm. good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want my soulmate not to be around. The truth is that the higher condition a spirit gets into, the, the more ability they have to connect to you. Okay. The issue is what is your blockages towards men. And, and that's the issue you're starting to work through now emotionally, which is really, really good. And, and in dealing with the soulmate longing and things like that, you'll work through these issues. The other thing is that this spirit, the second sphere spirit, may interpret your guide as your soulmate. Right? So he doesn't, he doesn't understand what soulmates are anyway. No, he didn't feel terribly developed yeah. actually. I yeah. thought, why are you talking to me? Yeah, he doesn't understand what soulmates are and so he's just assuming that this person who's giving you a lot of love must be your soulmate. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And so you can't really um, say that your soulmate has actually passed for a, for a, for a start and secondly, um, the spirit who's giving you this advice and giving you this information is, is doing, some, doing it to please you in the hope that he'll please you in some way and there's some law of attraction event going on there for you. Okay. Yeah, so if you can look at that, you'll see it. And later on you'll find the truth about your soulmate as you deal with some of those man emotions that are there still. Okay. All right. All right. Thank no you. No worries. Which you're doing, which is really good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thanks, all right. <laughs>
that are there that you can go and see during the month and have a bit of fun with it to actually, cha to actually challenge these fears that you have. Does that make sense? So what we'll be doing next week, so if you don't get to next week, that's fine. Just have a look on the uh, website. There should be a downloadable of the movies at the bottom of the, of the, of the PDF and just have a look at the, all of those movies. Now, one of those movies is the new movie coming out in November sometime called 2012, right? There's another one called Knowing that's been released recently, right? I want you to go back to the DVD store and hire out the day after tomorrow. There's a book called Patriots that I'd like you to have a look at. I start, there's stuff by conspiracy stuff about from Eve von Steiner we could also do anything that you know is going to bring up some fear for you all right sorry and by the way if you have ideas about that email them to myself or Mary and we can incorporate them in this list of what you can do have a bit of fun with it but remember that it's about accessing your fears so you know how you access your fear? You don't ignore them intellectually. You don't say, oh no, this might not happen and ignore it. And you don't also live in your fear. In other words, you go into terror and, uh, and I see you next month and you're still in a state of terror and you don't know what to do about it. That's not doing it either. What we need to do is get inside of your fears and actually bodily feel them and release them from you so they no longer are within you. And, and you'll find it's quite difficult to do. If we have the mic... Um, with the questions. I don't know if this is one that you want to add to it, but it scared the living daylights out of me earlier this year. I was looking at um, a website about a, a man who delivered a talk in Mullaney. That's fine. Oh, yeah. oh, sorry. I wrote down Yvonne. Yeah. And, I, and that now I'm, yeah. And there's also a book that I read, and 2012 is in the title, and it scared the crap out of me. Yeah. To the point where now my family doesn't talk, my husband's family won't talk to me <laughs> and referred me to Lifeline. Yeah, okay, okay. So what, if you can email some of that to us, right? So. You can't remember the book? Timeline 2012. There's even a, we saw today at uh, Lulie's, there's a book called uh, 2012 for Dummies that you might want to look at as well. If you. <laughs> <laughs> if you feel like that. It's quite good actually. So, uh, so anyway, what we're trying to do there for the mediums, this is for the mediums. Now, for the healers. For the healers, I'd like you to do exactly the same thing but with a whole different group of, mo of movies and books. I want you to focus on spirit possession books and spirit possession movies. So The Exorcism and Vanity, Emily Rose, maybe even The Exorcist if you're brave enough, and other movies like that. Just allow yourself to, to be triggered. Because many times as a, as a healer, we avoid the spirits in the interaction. Does that make sense? And what we want to do is connect to the spirits in the interaction and then work through it. So what we want to do is trigger our fears. We don't want to live in them. Alright, so we don't want to live in our fears, we want to just trigger them and get underneath the fear into the emotion. I, I, I'm dobbing him in, but Josh actually told me he did some processing around this issue and I wondered if it would be helpful to share with people your process. Do you feel comfortable with that? Now Josh had a, and by the way we're going quite late now, so if, if, you, if you want to leave, leave. Um, but because um, it's quarter to six for those people who don't know what the time is. Um, do you want to share that, Josh? Um, to, which one are we talking about? <laughs> Earth changes, yeah. That was after the last Earth changes thing that you did. With Monica? Um, when we were channeling on the, a few days ago? Oh, no, no, no. Or, no. Oh, um, the last... The first the talk the that first you did. The first talk, yeah. 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 After that, I went through, like, some big processes where I was lying on the floor and I was seeing all my family dead and went through all this big grief about that and yeah. um yeah but I, what, I, what I wanted to say I've been wanting to put my hand up but I wanted to say that um with this terror because there's so much terror and, and there's you know there's terror about losing your mind there's terror about spirits there's terror there's just so much terror and the thing that keeps coming to me is these these voice saying 
not a voice, but there's something saying to me, you know, one thing that you can't lose is your heart. And, you know, um, and that's the only thing that you, you can really trust because, you know, with all the spirit influences that are happening, that they're sort of, for me, I'm getting all this stuff about, or oh, don't deal with your terror about spirits because then you'll, um, then you won't be able to progress and like they're giving me all this stuff about that and this and every time I go to do to you know I've got the movie sitting there it's been sitting there for a couple of months and every time I you know go to that it's like oh no if you do that then you won't you'll get stuck and all this other stuff. So what's happening for Josh a lot Josh is quite mediumistic and so what's happening for him a lot is he's got this group of spirits around him who are, who are projecting at him all the time about fear so they're basically saying to him you know don't do this and they, they even talk to Josh in his own voice so it makes him sound feel like he's going crazy because he has a fear about going crazy right and they're even talking to him in his own voice and so it's a matter of letting himself feel through those emotions and they also like distort what I'm seeing like yesterday I don't know if Murray's here but I was looking at him and he started morphing into some creature and I was just like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> So what they're doing is they're even giving Josh pictures of what people, uh, of people looking distorted and everything, and, and just, just to scare Josh. It's funny because you're going through it and you start shaking, and you're like, oh, thanks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's doing me good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you've been mediumistic most of your life, haven't you? And you've had different experiences about a body, experiences and so forth. And, and, but the fear is still affecting you quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. There's this... Um, there's a huge wall of resistance constantly at me about whenever you know every mediumship thing comes up. Um, yeah, there's this big resistance yeah. to it, and um, like when I I got so excited about it when I you know first heard, you know the first mediumship started. I went off into the into the woods alone, and I was like, yes, let's bring on the spirits. And <laughs> like the first possum I heard, I was just like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I ran back to my car and I drove back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, and then I was like, and then I made this conscious decision of like, no, we'll be doing mediumship when I'm at a high progression and I'll be all, you know, I'll be good when, you know. Yeah. And as it's turning out, you're just getting heaps of projections of fear. Yeah, it's just like, you know, and, and the truth is like if, you know, if we get through this as soon as possible, like, we'll see more of what, what's happening with Monica where we're actually helping all these people and, and all yeah. these you know, rewards that you can get from it. Yeah, because at the moment what they're doing a lot is hooking into the fear and then just making it worse for you. Yeah. And the key is to, with all fear, remember fear is all false expectations appearing real, right? Where we believe things are going to happen when they're actually not going to happen. The key, the key, what, the key thing we need to do is always remember prayer. Right? So when the fear gets too intense and, and you're just feeling, feeling and it's just too much for you now, then start the, start the prayer and just, just allow God to help you through these emotions of fear. And that's one of the, what we're going to do next weekend is make lots of suggestions to you about your fear. All right? So hopefully we'll sort through that. Thanks, mate. No worries. Awesome. Well, I don't know about you, but I thought that was an interesting day, wasn't it? And, uh, and so uh, we look forward to seeing you guys next uh, week uh, up at Butterham at 44 Cog Hill, Coggle Road at Butterham. And uh, when you drive into that place, you're going to be pretty surprised <laughs> if you haven't been there before. And so we look forward to seeing you then. We'll be in a meeting at 10 o'clock for those of people who would like to help set up and dismantle each day. There'll be cleaning to do each day and all those kind of things. So if you'd like to help with that process, there'll be a meeting at 10 a.m. to just explain all of those details. And then the, there's a normal meetings at 1 o'clock to 5.30 both days. And it will all be about, the first day will be about fear, and I'll talk a lot about fear. And the second day we're going to talk about all these things that we can do during the next month to deal with our fear and how to deal with our fear and how to process fear and all those kind of things. So it should be quite handy for us, hopefully. Alright? <laughs> Sounds like a fun weekend. If, if nobody rocks up, then myself and Mary will probably spend a lot of time down the beach or whatever. <laughs> I'll catch you later, guys. Thank you. Thank you.